All right, we got another developing story here. It is about Dwayne Wade, 12-time NBA All-Star guard. D. Wade nearing a deal to sign with his buddy LeBron in Cleveland. Probably no shock there, but he had a buyout, left $8 million on the table from the Bulls. From my understanding, the order went from Cleveland, OKC, and the Spurs in that order. It looks as if the Cavs are ones who got Dwayne Wade. Now, I know that he had said, and he had talked to others, that this was about winning, a winning decision yep. for him. He wanted to be in position to win. Um, let's start there. What does this do for the Cavs if, in fact, the deal is done? I think it does a lot for the Cavs. I think if you, you know, a lot of people are going to look at Dwayne Wade and say he's washed, look at his season in Chicago. But you have to factor in a couple of different things. I don't think they say that. I don't think they say that. No. I mean, he shot like 43% and didn't really put a lot of effort in the defense. But that has to do with the situation yeah. he's in, right? Sure. You've got to consider motivation. You've got to consider teammates. That's what I was going to say. And if you look at his years, those four years with LeBron in Miami, and granted he was a few years younger, but the last three years, his shooting percentage went up every single year to the point where he was at 32 years old, shooting 54 and a half percent from the field so you put him with LeBron and you put him with other teammates where he can be a playmaker he'd be more a sort of uh, pick his spots with his shots and everything else he could be an efficient two guard and he could definitely contribute to a team that is finals ready well that's right it's interesting so let's hang on that I, I don't think necessarily that Chicago is indicative of, of the type of Dwayne that we right. can see right so he gets there how does this look how does this look how many touches does he get because they're deep and that's going to be an interesting one. That's going to be one where, you know, LeBron's going to have to sort of go back and think about his Miami days and how he utilized Dwayne Wade right. in that situation because you have other deals like, okay, let's say they played Derrick Rose alongside Dwayne Wade, alongside LeBron James a lot. That doesn't seem to be a perfect combination in terms of guys that can play off of each other or complement each other. But we saw it in Miami. After the first year, after sure. LeBron, Dwayne took a little bit of a step back, LeBron took over, we've seen that chemistry, we've seen that combination. So if they get an Isaiah Thomas back, if a Kyle Korver has a good three-point shooting right. season, if these things happen to spread the floor for them, sure. they can absolutely operate together. All right, the bigger picture is now, what does this do in terms of going to the finals and actually competing and giving the Warriors a run for their money? That one's, I mean, listen, I don't care what team you put together. It could be the Thunder, you're putting together superstars. It could be the Cleveland Cavaliers. You're not going to favor them against the Warriors. The Warriors are that good offensively. They're that efficient. And Dwayne Wade defensively isn't going to really do much against that team. But, you know, I mean, he's... He's been on teams that have given them problems, Miami teams. Boston maybe has figured out how to, you know, so maybe they can find a way. Obviously, they beat them one year, so. I, you know what I think is so discouraging? Every time we talk about one of these moves being made, whether it be Carmelo, and we'll talk about that, Carmelo going to OKC, um, Dwayne possibly siding with the Cavs, uh, we, we still say, okay, but they're not going to give right. the Warriors a real run for their money. Let's hang on that. What needs to happen? I mean, do, does everyone need to band together as one, the best players outside of anybody else on the Warriors? No, I mean, just for this particular season, you're going to have to have a little bit of luck there. You're probably going to have to have an injury or two to deal with with the Warriors. But frankly, if you get a team that just sort of comes together, that has a great chemistry, I mean, we didn't see the Warriors coming until they were there. And not to say that, you know, Oklahoma City all of a sudden is going to be a surprise team because we know how those guys play. Mm -hmm. But we also that maybe they find some crazy chemistry. Maybe they do uh, change the way the Warriors have to play, and maybe they give Kevin Durant some trouble. You never really know. I mean, just just a matter of nobody's going to be favored against right. them. But okay, I'm not so we'll leave it at that. Certain. Favored. We, we we're not Nostradamus, but right. not favored. Okay, I'll, let's let's talk about Hoodie Mello, shall we? <laughs> so uh, media day yesterday, lots to talk about. Uh, I want to get your biggest takeaway on or off the court. Well, I mean, my biggest takeaway was probably Greg Popovich and, and his speech. Uh, whether uh, about uh, equality and about the, pre the current racial tone in the country. And I do think that, you know, when you look at, you remember when the football players were saying, hey, we, maybe we need a white player to take part in this situation. Well, look at Greg Popovich. He's an older white man with a gray beard. Like, you can't, and, and he's telling you things that everybody should listen to. And he's talking about, a, he's running an organization it's probably the most diverse in the sure. league, and he brings them together, and they have regular success at a high level. This should be a man people would listen to. So sure. to me, that man, the more he speaks about politics and our system and, uh, and, the our, better, and, our, and our The country, better we are. I absolutely think we, we should all listen. Yeah, uh, he definitely said some very profound things yesterday, and it was like, you know, I'm at the movie theater, and I was talking to the screen. I'm like, preach, pop, right? go ahead. You know, it was like <laughs> one of those moments. Um, meanwhile... Okay, see, Mello says that uh, someone asked him the question, so you're not coming off the bench, or are you coming off the bench? Did you get, like, who, who was that? <laughs> and secondly, uh, I like how Mello laughed. Uh, is that, that's news to me. Was I ever coming <laughs> off the bench? He says he's a different player. Do you believe that? 
I believe he's a or different can player. He be a different player. Yes, and that, that, I think that's probably the better answer, right? The better question, because he has been a different player on Olympic teams. He has been a different player on better teams or with better teammates. And I do think that he can sort of fall in line, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, with this team. And you know, because Paul George can run the pick and roll, Russell Westbrook can run the pick and roll, Carmelo probably not so much. Mm -hmm. So like, make him more of a finisher, make him more of a guy that you know, you know, catch and shoot type of guy. It's really just a matter of Billy Donovan. Like he's got to find a way to figure this out. You gotta. And if you like, if you go back to his college success. He had success, obviously, with moving the ball. Big sure. men who knew how to play. These are three isolation players he's going to have his hands full with. Listen, I was thinking that has to be the toughest task thus far for what Billy mm -hmm. Donovan has to do. Um, Izzy, can you hang out here for just a moment? We want to make no. sure top five judge. Okay, fine, you want to go home? Though. You don't want to be here? Please. Okay. Thank you. David? I am different than normal. You are different than normal. See ya! He's done it! Home run number 50! The rookie home runs in Major League history. Aaron Judge going on a little home run binge here late in the season. So he now has 50 home runs. Most ever by a rookie in baseball and also now the fifth player in Yankees history to hit 50. These other guys pretty good. A-Rod and Roger Maris, Mickey Mantle, Babe Ruth. So Aaron Judge in some elite company there. And he's yeah. also... Speaking of elite company, there you are, David. There I am. Uh, he's mm -hmm. also prompted us to do a top five. Did he? On the greatest rookie seasons across all sports in, okay. in, in recorded time. Okay. Okay? Do so, you want to go first or do you want me to go first? What I'm do you want to do? I'm going first. I'm going to go with Ichiro here you at always five. Go first. I do go first. I set the tone. I set the table just like Ichiro. <laughs> 242 <laughs> hits as a rookie. That's like a, a hit and a half a game if you play every game. And 56 steals, and he batted 350. He was the MVP, the Rookie of the Year. Number four, Tamu Solani. Get each your own. No. There. Where's Tamu? No. There he is? No. Rookie with no. the Winnipeg Jets. Carrie, no. let me tell you something. 76 <laughs> tell me goals. Something. <laughs> let me preach about Tamu Solani. 76 uh -huh. goals. That's tied for the fifth most for anybody all time. Uh -huh. Number three, your, your uh -huh. buddy Eric Dickerson. Okay, that's oh, my pal. Over uh -huh. 1,800 uh -huh. yards rushing, rushing as a rookie, 18 touchdowns, so he's got to uh -huh. be on the list, right? Yeah, yeah. Number two, Shoeless Joe Jackson. Not oh, Babe okay. Ruth there on the left, but Shoeless Joe on the right. Hit 408 as a rookie. Archives. Imagine Archives. What, what he could have done with shoes on. I mean, come uh -huh. on. <laughs> and finally, number one, the big fella, the big dipper, Will Chamberlain. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. These are the numbers for the, for the uh -huh. Warriors in 1959. 37.6 points a game, 27 rebounds per game. That's just, that's cartoonish. He's a rookie. Okay, so listen, I got people in my ear. The president has called and they don't like your list. Why uh, not? Because, David, you know, you always got to pull up the archives, the black and the white. You have to show us what you know. I mean, listen. David. Listen, H history what? didn't start four years ago, okay? No, oh, talk to me hello. about it. Bring it in. Bring it. Hello. You got Number Will five for me. I do have Will. You already broke it down for us. Number four for me, David, really quickly. I'm going to rush through mine. Eric Dickerson. Uh, record still set. 1,808. You I know. Got I've it. been over this. Keep going. Oh, okay. My bad. Uh -huh. Aaron Judge. <laughs> we just talked about Aaron Judge. Yes. Number three. I think, you, I think you missed out, David. Yeah, he struck out a lot. I mean, he's okay. had a great year. I'm, but uh, we're talking all the time. I... I uh oh! Look what, what, I did. What, what is going on here? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm talking bad about you today. I, 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 <laughs> Night train lane. <laughs> Record still set. 14 picks, never done. Number one. How could you forget this one? That's disrespectful. Magic. He, he was good. Really? He was good. Never. Did he, not was it, he, really good. he was great. He was good. He was great. Did not he have it as high up this year. He won a championship his rookie season. He it was the Finals MVP. Are you kidding me? Who does that? He, he had an, that? he had an awfully nice campaign. He was really you said really an, awful an awfully season. nice oh. and good is, is he, what you is say he when you talk about what, what do you think? Who's, who's I mean, listening? Carrie, I love you, but this is a runaway for David right here. I'll get out of here. I mean, here. how do you have how do you not have Ichiro on the because list? Because you know why he wasn't here. The whole I'm talking to him over here, guys. You know why? Uh, huh. <laughs> uh, talk to me. Because magic and, and number one with magic as a Laker. Come on now, like Are that's you just bias. Me? It's just bias, Carrie. Are you it's bias. Kidding? Will Chamberlain. Tell it, Izzy. You had Aaron Judge ahead of Will Chamberlain. Excuse me. Don't disrespect Magic. Everyone here, no one can go to a Laker game here ever. Magic, do you hear this? 
This is ridiculous. Aaron Judge struck out where, 400 where times. Where are we in a world where you say magic is nice and and, and good? And good. From anywhere but one, Terry. You nice maybe have a chance. And good, David? That's how you describe magic? Nice and good? Izzy said it perfectly, I thought. Uh, Izzy Thank said it perfectly. <laughs> I tend to do that sometimes. <laughs>